So today we're going to discuss um, HUB certification and more regional resources. Next slide. So we have the, the Comptroller's Office, the Statewide uh, Procurement Division. Um, we're going to do a little review there and we're going to um, provide us some additional information regarding the HUB program and HUB certification. And then we have some guest speakers from our um, MOAs, entities that the state of Texas has a memorandum of agreement with. And we'll provide some statewide small business resources. And then again, we'll go into questions and answers. So next slide. So we have Maya Ingram with us from the statewide hub program in the comptroller's office. And then I'm Lynn Hottie, director of the hub program. Um, outreach and training from the Texas Department of Information Resources. And the next slide. And our guest speakers today are Constance Jones, Vice President of Operations for the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council. And we have Debbie Hurst, President and CEO of the Women's Business Council Southwest, and Christina Mortel from the Texas Veterans Commission and the Veteran Entrepreneur Program. So they're going to join us today and provide you some additional information. Um, if you'll go to the next slide. I'm going to turn it over now to Maya Ingram and she'll provide you some additional information. Thank you, Lynn, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Texas Government Code 2161 established the statewide historically underutilized business program, often called the hub program. It further authorized the Comptroller of Public Accounts to administer the program and therefore the statewide hub program falls within the statewide hub, the statewide procurement division of the Office of the Comptroller of Public Accounts. The, the CPA is the administrator of the program and the statewide hub program rules can be found in Title 34 of the Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 20. This is throughout the presentation and often in discussions about the hub rules, it is referred to as 34 TAC 20. The statewide hub program facilitates the rules for the program. In 34 TAC 20, Rule 284, every state purchaser in state agencies and state universities are required to make a good faith effort to include certified hubs in the procurement contracting opportunities for commodities, goods, and services. This includes construction related projects. Agency and university procurement divisions along with their hub programs are responsible for including hubs in their procurement opportunities to meet their hub goals. Next slide, please. The statewide hub program is based on the procurement disparity study that identified a lack of participation from small businesses in procurement contracting. The statewide hub program is further charged with establishing the annual procurement utilization goals certifying small businesses, auditing the certified small businesses, compiling state agency and university expenditures and reporting semi-annually and annually, maintaining hub rules and updating them as needed, assisting state agency and universities in establishing a compliant hub program and providing training and assistance to hub coordinators and small businesses for a successful hub partnership. Next slide, please. The statewide hub webpage lists the current statewide hub goals. Statewide agencies and universities may adopt these rules or set their own, but they must be based on the disparity study and their own purchasing needs. For the individual agencies or universities establishing their goals, go to the HUB program webpage or call the HUB program 
and we can assist you. Hubs may participate as primes or subcontracting opportunities. Next slide. Qualified ethnic minority owners of must show proof of their Asian American, Asian Pacific American, Black American, Hispanic American, Native American Indian, American women, service disabled veterans with a 20% disability, and they must own and control the day-to-day -day operations of the business with 51% ownership. Next slide. The hub certification is a four-year certification. It's free of charge and includes a hub directory listing within the centralized master bidders list. It guarantees a good faith effort in the state procurement contracting opportunities. Next slide. However, guaranteeing a good faith effort does not make the statewide hub program a state set aside program. It is up to the certified hub to establish its profile with the proper NIGP codes and market its business to the state agency and universities. Ask the hub coordinators for guidance with the NIGP codes that best fit the agency you are trying to work with. Identify those in your profile and properly introduce yourself to that entity. Free participation in hub economic development forums and trainings and networking events. Next slide. Links and contact information to the statewide hub office and hub small business certification applications are listed here. As we mentioned earlier, state purchasers must provide certified hubs with a good faith effort to include them in the entity's procurement opportunities. The centralized master bidders list is known as the CMBL. It is considered the state's vendor list and therefore the list used to search for vendors and provide them notice. While the law requires the purchasers to search the CMBL and the hub directory is part of the CMBL, the searches only require the CMBL search. Vendors are listed on the CMBL, must pay a $70 annual fee to be included on that list. Because purchasers and hub coordinators may supplement that notification list, it's important for vendors in the hub directory and CMBL vendors to include accurate National Institute of Governmental Purchasing or NIGP commodity codes on their profile. Next slide. The statewide hub program maximizes the certification opportunities through certification memorandums of agreements or MOAs with other small business focused organizations that also provide certification opportunities. A list of current MOAs can be found on the statewide hub webpage under the related links of hub and business resources. Next slide. We partner with our MOAs and allow for their certification businesses to receive a free reciprocal statewide hub certification, providing the small business meets our qualifications. As partners, we share information through outreach, education, and training. So today we have two of our MOAs, the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council and the Women's Business Council Southwest. Also with us today, you'll hear from a partner resource, our sister agency, Texas Veterans Commission. Next slide. And our first speaker today is Ms. Constance Jones, Vice President of Operations for the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council. Welcome, Constance. Thank you, and welcome everyone to the presentation. 
Um, first, I'd like to thank the Hub Department for putting this together. This is an awesome resource for businesses. And so I just want to thank um, the team for putting this together and allowing us the opportunity to participate. Next slide. Um, the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council is a nonprofit organization that certifies ethnic minority firms. Our service territory reaches from North Nacogdoches, east to the Louisiana border, south to Corpus Christi, and west to Austin County. Next slide. We are part of a national organization called the National Minority Supplier Development Council, and, and um, we focus on four pillars. Those, fil those pillars are certified, develop, connect, and advocate. So this is when we say that we are a certification entity that has resources all of our events and activities are going to fall into these four areas. Next slide. <clears throat> our first pillar is certified. So HMSDC has a major impact on um, the communities we serve in addition to the state as a whole. So we are focused on minority business development. And in that, you can see some of the numbers that we have as it relates to our minority businesses. So we certify firms depending on their revenue size and class. So what Maya was mentioning uh, for our small businesses, falls into our class one and two category. So 46% of our MBEs are class one, which means have revenues under a million. 35% are class two with sales between one and 10 million. 13% are class three with sales between 10 and 50 million. And we have 6% of firms that are class four with sales over 50 million or more. Next slide. So, so as Maya mentioned too, um, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to these agencies and that's what makes this so awesome for businesses who are eligible is because they can go to many different resources in order to uh, maximize their opportunities in both the government and the private sector. So similar, our certification is for ethnic minorities who are US citizens. They must be at least 51% all managed and control, an independent for-profit business, and the owner must have expertise in the functional mission of the business. Next slide. So certification has many benefits other than the MOA that we have that automatically gets you certified with the state of Texas. We have um, opportunity for sales and marketing. So it goes into all of those pillars work together in order to really support the minority business owner. So we provide financial assistance, educational programming, um, business development, advocacy and access to corporations and governmental agencies. So we really believe in supporting the minority business so that they are able to grow holistically and reach their goals of, of contracting with major corporations. Next slide. Our pillar number two is development. So development is very key to the growth of businesses. Not all of businesses come into the organization at the same level. We see that, of course, by revenue. We also see it by years in business, and we also see it out of the necessity of why business start. So we really focus on developing the firms so that they can reach that next level or that level of potential that they're interested in doing. So we have several strategic leadership programs that really help our firms. And those programs are listed as our CEO conversations, our coaching corner, executive coaches, and MBE Leadership Academy. So that level of programming is really centered around the C-suite of a minority firm to really help you understand what strategy should you be looking at in order to help grow your organization. We then go back to most of our um, C-suite executives that um, participate on our board of directors, which are CPOs and higher, and we ask them to provide free executive coaching to our certified MBEs. So the 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 point is that you have access to the government to the procurement organization through your certification. And then you also have access to the executives so they can help you actually continue to grow and sustain your organization. 
We connect and meet the financing needs of our firms. And we do that through having relationships with not just traditional banking institutions, but also with non-traditional. During COVID, d during what we are in, uh, experiencing now, and with the PPP loans that went out, we actually partnered with the CDFI who was able to lend our firms um, money through the PPP um, um, program. And so it's very important that we have these relationships in order to get financing for our firms, regardless to what's happening in the, in the industry. We build connections and value proposition for our MBEs so that they're able to sell and communicate exactly what it is that they provide for M uh, major corporations and why they should choose them as a supplier. So we do this through supplier idol and talking stick. So supplier idol is basically like American Idol, um, only instead of uh, the judges, you have major corporations who are judging and they're able to actually uh, review your sales pitch to see if you're resonating with them so that you don't have to guess and see if they understand what it is that you do. They're actually telling you that information. And last but not least, we develop critical skills to build capacity. So we are focused on capacity building in the organization. How you come in is not how you have to stay, and hopefully that's not how you stay. And so these programs that we have actually help build those levels of skills, either through direct contracting or reviewing of your information or helping you form a strategic alliances in order to go after larger business are things that we do to help firms build that capacity. Next slide. Um, major corporations actually believe in MBE development. So as a nonprofit organization, we are funded by major corporations. So they actually created us over 45 years ago. And so these pri private sector initiatives just build on to what was already established by the government entities and really help MBEs and small businesses or understand their supply chain. So what the question we get all the time is why do private corporations actually participate in this? And so many of them have different reasons, but a lot of it stems from the corporate responsibility their customer demand, either if it's us as individuals walking through the store or government entities or other major corporations and just the innovation that our businesses seem to bring to the table and their nimbleness. Next slide. Our third pillar is connect. And this is um, actually connecting you to uh, your end users. So we currently have 169 local corporate members within HMSDC. Most national major corporations are members of the organization. Um, and you can see on this slide, what it just depicts is the uh, just a sampling of some of our corporate members that's a part of the organization. So you can see that we stem from oil and gas, education, transportation, um, even consumer services, as well as consulting, financial. And so it's really just to show you the magnitude of the type of corporations that actually participate in the organization. Next slide. Um, and we believe in delivering those right connections to you by helping you understand how to navigate that. So we actually do corporate opportunity calls. And what those are is that when there's an opportunity from a major corporation, we'll actually set up a virtual call for the, for the exact buyer or purchasing team to have a straight talk on how to do business with the suppliers that are interested in bidding on the project so you can understand the nuances and all of the and all of the pieces that are a part of that proposal so those corporate opportunity calls have really been great during this time because it allows us to get the information from our corporate member and then provide it directly to the MBEs that are wanting to bid on their opportunities without missing a beat, without that face-to-face -face interaction. And so that's a good way that we understand what our suppliers need, and then we're meeting the need of our corporate member. Um, we also provide insight into the buying 
uh, buying process of our corporate members. And so that differs based on the type of corporate member we have and on the type of agency that's actually buying. Because we support not just the state, but also national organizations and corporations, we the, the way that they buy in that buying cycle is, is different across the board. So we help you understand that by putting together activities and events that helps you understand their procurement and supply chain. And some of these organizations you can buy is just one person buying a commodity or service. And other parts of the organization, there's a procurement team that may be located in London and France and China and India. So how do you gain access to that information and understand those buying teams? Those are the types of programs that we do to ensure that you are being able to connect to the individuals that's buying your goods and services. Next slide. And our last pillar, of course, is to advocate. So we are an advocacy organization that stands together for the better good of the community and the constituents in which we serve. So you'll see that we support the MBE growth um, in our organization through have and our corporate members by having these touch points with them. So we like to make sure that once you get certified that you actually know how to use that certification to your benefit. So we put on different programming, we touch bases with you um, in order to ensure that you're not, you're not getting lost. We're a significant size organization with a national footprint. So we want to make sure that if you are interested in selling to a corporation that's outside of Houston or selling to a corporation that's even in El Paso, that we're able to make those connections for you um, and um, consult with you to ensure that you don't have any questions or there's no mishaps in that. We also help you improve the utilization of your National Minority Supplier Development Council status. So becoming a nationally certified MBE allows you access to different training materials. So we give scholarships to places like Dartmouth and Tuck and um, the University of Washington, those programs that are specifically related to in increasing and assisting minority businesses and their capacity building and growth initiatives. And so we do that because we want to ensure that we are certifying quality business that have the ability to grow. There's nothing more exciting for an agency like us to have an MBE come into the organization at a level one and then move to a level four and then come back and ask us for um, certified MBEs and hub firms that they could use on their projects. Um, that's what we're here for. So the circle of life, as you call it in minority business development, is really what we strive for and really how we advocate on behalf of our firm. And then lastly, we provide an onboarding roadmap for corporations and MBEs. And this speaks to what I said earlier about we don't want you to get lost. We are actually here to be a conduit of your business growth. And so we appreciate um, our MBEs taking the time to go through this step, and we just like to connect them and making sure that they're effective in what it is that they're doing. Next slide. And that is the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council. So here's our contact information. Um, please feel free to follow us on our on our any of our social media channels. You can see what. Uh, the types of events and activities. If you actually go to our a Flickr account, you'll be able to reminisce with us when we were able to actually, um, <clears throat> excuse me, have events live. So you can see the type of relationship building and connections that we have to ensure that uh, you're interested in HMSCC. So again, thank you for participating. Here's my contact information and I look forward to asking answering any questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you, Constance. Next, I would like to introduce another MOA to the statewide hub program. Debbie Hurst from the Women's Business Council Southwest. Welcome, Debbie. 
Thank you, Maya. I, it's my pleasure to be here and welcome everyone to this talk series. I, um, as Constance said, I'm very appreciative to, uh, for our relationship with Hub and this opportunity uh, to visit with you guys today. Next slide. So the Women's Business Council Southwest uh, exists to facilitate mutually beneficial procurement opportunities between women business enterprises and our sustaining corporate members. Um, our sustaining members include private corporations, uh, public entities, institutions, any organization that is interested in doing business with women-owned businesses uh, would join us as a sustaining member. We are uh, a one-stop shop for certification. Um, in addition to our very valued relationship with Hub, we also are a regional partner organization to the Women's Business Enterprise National Council and they set the standard, they are the gold standard for WBE certification in the private sector. So we are one of 14 regional partner organizations and in that picture here on the slide in the upper right hand corner, you'll kind of see what our territory is within the United States in certifying WeBank uh, national certification. Uh, in addition to WeBank certification, of course, we, in our agreement with um, the state of Texas, provide uh, screening for the HUB certification. We also do the SBA's women-owned small business certification. So if you're interested in doing business either um, nationally with private institutions on a state level or on a federal level, you can get all of those certifications uh, through one application process with us. We also do SBE, Small Business Enterprise Screening, for those uh, primarily utilized by some public entities who have a small business enterprise program, a gender neutral program, and some examples of that uh, here in the uh, North Texas area would be the DFW International Airport or Dallas County. We are a 501c3 uh, founded in 1995, and we cover North and Central Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and New Mexico. We have a satellite office in Austin, Texas, and our headquarters is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We have over 85 sustaining members here within our region and about 1,200 certified women business enterprises. Next slide. A little bit about uh, the breakdown of our membership. Of those 12,000 WBE members, uh, the number of WBEs who've been in business greater than 10 years is 793. So you can see uh, a significant majority of our members are pretty long-standing uh, established businesses. Um, our businesses employ over 47,000 workers and generate over $11 billion in annual gross revenue. I've included here um, some of the um, most represented industries uh, include advertising and marketing, construction, consulting, IT, and manufacturing. Uh, these 1,200 WBEs um, really cover the spectrum in terms of industries. Uh, we're in virtually every industry um, with the largest concentration uh, in those interest industries listed. And then our membership revenue breakdown, about 41% of our members um, are have annual revenues under a million, about 31% between one and five million, 12% between five and 10, 10 million, and 16% over 10 million in revenues. So we serve a very diverse landscape of women business enterprises and provide development, not only certification, but development opportunities that are geared. Um, to where they are in their journey. 
Next slide. And again, uh, as Constance provided for you, I'm just giving you a smattering here of the entities that are involved with us as sustaining members. So as you can see, um, they cover the spectrum of Fortune 500 companies, um, some who are headquartered in our region, some who are not, um, all who have very strong supplier diversity initiatives and, and invest in um, not only internal programs to develop their relationships with WBEs, uh, but they support our organization as a conduit to uh, their access to certified WBE suppliers. So in addition to our corporate members, you can see I've got uh, several of our public entities listed there. Uh, this is just a subset of, of our membership. Um, we track through voluntary reporting on an annual basis, how much business is done with WBEs. And uh, a subset of our 85 members reported 10.3 billion spent with WBEs in 2019. Um, so I think we, I know we had less than 50% reporting. So um, you can see that there is so much opportunity within, um, not only the state of Texas, but uh, throughout the nation for um, businesses to have an impact within these major corporations, uh, either directly or through their supply chains. Next slide. So what I really wanted to focus on today is how do you make the most of your certification? You've learned, um, from the HUB program, how to access opportunities specifically related to the state of Texas. And then through the partner organizations like Houston and ourselves, uh, you have access to, uh, to other opportunities for development as well. Uh, as a member of our organization, I encourage you to utilize our member database. You, once you are certified through us, you are a member of our Women's Business Council Southwest, and you have access to contact information for each of our primary contacts within our major uh, sustaining members, all of our 85 members, but you also have access to the other w, 1200 uh, certified WBEs. Um, not only do our, if, members have access regionally, but also nationally. So as a uh, regional partner organization to WeBank nationally, uh, once you're certified, you are in their national database as well and have access to the uh, thousands of uh, corporate and government entities who participate through WeBank across the nation. You have an opportunity to get involved uh, and, and really develop relationships here on a regional basis through either volunteering um, or certainly through attending the, the myriad events that are designed and, and provided throughout the year. We provide uh, funding through um, our Lily Knox Investment Award on an annual basis, our WBE members have the opportunity to apply for uh, funding through the, through the Lily Knox Award um, that can provide them with up to $20,000 in um, cash investment in their business. You can take advantage of the many educational opportunities that are offered um, on um, from as small as uh, monthly table topics luncheons that we provide uh, that address business development issues um, and management concerns as well from HR to marketing to um, um, growing and divesting to um, any, any areas of business development and growth, we provide educational opportunities for our members on a regional basis as well as a national basis. So it goes from, uh, as I said, small table topics to uh, executive education programs that might be a week long program through the Tuck, uh, through a relationship with the Tuck School of Business. 
you have the opportunity to utilize um, the certification uh, logo as well as a forward-facing, consumer-facing, woman-owned logo as a member of WeBank and the Women's Business Council Southwest. And we really encourage you to take advantage of those marketing opportunities to identify your business as a certified WBE um, because it's certainly been shown that the uh, it matters to corporations and government entities that you are third party uh, verified as uh, certified WBE. Uh, but it also matters to consumers when they are making purchasing decisions. You have opportunity for uh, recognition and awards. And I can't really say enough about the importance of recognition to uh, the growth of your business. It's not just about congratulating one another. It's about stamps of approval and opportunities to get your name out um, as a valued and reliable and uh, trustworthy supplier. I mentioned um, apply your certification and all of your marketing materials. And then also, I really encourage everybody, once you get certified, to take advantage of um, the, the databases that you need to be registered in. You heard about um, the hub databases um, for the state of Texas. Individual corporations have the same thing. And um, while it can be somewhat time consuming, it is very important that you get listed on their supplier diversity portals if they are targeted customers for you, because that's how they you get into their system and, and are easily accessible by them. Next slide. A little bit more about I'd recommend access for you. Um, on the left side there, you'll see a list of our top three signature events, our Parade of Stars Awards Gala, Connections to Contracts is a very specific procurement related event. During that event, you have the opportunity to meet with our corporate members on a rotating basis to learn more about the specific opportunities that they have on the street at the time, uh, to learn about how their commitment to supplier diversity, um, what their goals and initiatives are, and how to access opportunities as they come along with those corporations. Harvesting Partnerships is a primarily educational focused uh, signature event that occurs again on an annual basis. Um, we have um, keynote addresses as well as WBE expert, subject matter expert roundtables. And that is the event where we award our Lily Knox Investment Award every year. We do what we call trade talks on a quarterly basis. And these are uh, industry focused events. Uh, it provides an opportunity for you to hone in on specific industries and really learn not only how to do business with those corporations, but more importantly, where they're going, um, how to gear up, how to um, get an insider's view on um, the plans and growth within that industry so that you can strategically um, market yourself within those companies. I mentioned our table topics that occur on a monthly basis. Those are smaller events. We have about an average of 50 to 60 attendees on a, a variety of topics. We also have, as I mentioned, an Austin satellite office. So we have uh, ongoing procurement related uh, events and activities in the Austin market as well. Um, an, an annual event titled Austin Insights, um, an event called Winning the Bid, which is um, individual connections with corporate members. Um, Women-owned Wednesdays happen um, once a month in Austin, hearing from WBE members on um, 
how they have made their certification work for them and opportunities for growth within the organization. We do, uh, we have a committee dedicated to women of color outreach um, to provide programming that really targets our women business owners of color in um, understanding the value of certification for their businesses as a WBE as well as as an MBE. Um, they are the single largest, fastest growing segment of uh, women business enterprises in the nation. And then of course we have regional and industry specific, what we call happy hours. These are opportunities, these are very informal and they happen throughout the Metroplex uh, as well as in Austin. Um, some are industry focused, some are regional focused, just opportunities for continued networking. Even though you are in, entered in, you're certified and you're entered into databases, we all know that the real value in business connections is doing business with people that you know, people that you trust. And so every single thing that we do includes um, significant networking opportunities so that you can build those relationships. Next slide. This is the Women's Business Council Southwest. That's our um, website and please follow us and check us out on our various social media channels. Uh, I really am appreciative of this opportunity and I look forward to answering any questions you may have later on. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Next slide, please. Next is our sister agency, the Texas Veterans Commission. We welcome Ms. Christina Mortel. She's the Outreach Coordinator for the Veteran Entrepreneur Program. Christina. Thank you, Maya. I appreciate the opportunity to be with everyone today. Hi, everyone. I'm Christina Mortel with TVC, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, Texas Veterans Commission and our hub program. Uh, next slide, please. First, if you're not familiar with Texas Veterans Commission, uh, we were formed in 1927, and our mission really is to help veterans and families in a holistic manner. Uh, we perform many functions and help veterans and families uh, within our state agency. And if you can go to the next slide, I'll show you the eight programs that we have. So we have eight different organizations within the agency, and we cover these areas. Uh, we help veterans and families with employment, education, uh, you know, here with Hazelwood, GI Bill, uh, obviously with their health care and claims. Uh, we also have a grant and funding program. But we also help with mental health. Um, I'm in the entrepreneurship program, and we work with our uh, hub coordinator, Chris Wood, to do outreach to help veterans and families that are interested in starting small business. So let's talk about that. So can you go to the next slide, please? So as I mentioned, I'm in the entrepreneurship program and we are a team of four people that cover the entire state and we help veterans and families start or expand their small business. And on the slide in front of you, you can see some of the areas that we do that. We first start with um, a initial consultation and we help you if you're not already formed uh, with your entity formation, making sure you're getting your EIN, uh, your business banking account, et cetera. But most importantly, we wanna help you vet your idea or your business or product. And we help doing, do that with our uh, business planning review. We can also take you through a business model canvas exercise. Uh, we wanna make sure that you're kind of thinking holistically about the business, not just the uh, tactical steps you have to take, but strategically where you fit. And if you have a market, for your product or service, and we help you vet that. As uh, the folks on the call mentioned, we also help you with access to capital, and we also have good relationships with the CDFI organizations as well, the community development financial institutions. Uh, one of the good reasons that we work with CDFIs is that they do have uh, excellent rates for women-owned businesses and veteran-owned businesses uh, and for the veteran community, it's uh, 5%. Now this is pre-COVID, so I just wanna make sure I make that clear, but they uh, normally will help veterans get uh, 
their business is funded at 5%, and they will help uh, with startups, which many organizations or traditional banking institutions will not do. So if you're looking at a startup, uh, or you know, you're know you thinking about something in the future, great to reach out to us. It will definitely help you try to get lender ready. And part of, the, part of the way we do that, obviously, is helping you validate your business plan, looking at your financials, your startup costs, et cetera. We also have been working extensively to help veterans and families um, get access to government contracting. And that's why we've looked uh, and worked closely with the comptroller to expand our hub program. And I'll go into that a little bit more when we go to our website. And I also want to mention, too, that we do help uh, businesses with mergers and acquisitions. Ironically, we are finding that there are businesses that are interested in possibly being bought out by one of their employees. Uh, we also have uh, veterans that are in transition that are looking at buying an established business that's uh, outside of franchising, but maybe a privately owned business that's looking for new leadership. So uh, we also help organizations in those areas as well. Let's go to the next slide. Or it might be the website. Yeah, let's go to, I think it's the website, Tracy. Thank you. Yeah, so here's our two websites and Tracy's gonna be kind enough to take us there live if we can. And I'm gonna highlight some of our um, hub program information and where you can find it. So you're looking at the TBC homepage. So if you go to the about uh, tab, you can scroll down to TBC procurement and contracts. Thank you. And when you come to this page, uh, there's two or three pieces of good information I think you might find helpful. And the first part is, um, obviously, it's going to highlight how to work with TBC if you are looking for some opportunities. And if you scroll down a little bit, it will cover the eight areas that we currently uh, procure items and commodities for, I mean, uh, products and services. So uh, Chris Wood, who is our hub coordinator, he his contact information is on this page. But I want you to see these are the areas that we normally procure items at. Uh, procure items in. We are a small agency. We're only about 400 people. So you can see we're not doing construction and things like that, but we are doing these things, which are obviously very necessary for us to fulfill our mission. On this page, you'll also find our current solicitations. We do have one out there right now, but uh, because of COVID, it may be pulled back down. Uh, that was for uh, meeting and training facilities. That was, That's on the Electronic State Business Daily. If you go further down the page, you will find our contact information and more information that was mentioned previously by the comptroller's office, um, you know, good to know information, et cetera. And if, even on the uh, bottom of the page, you can actually navigate to other locations on the TBC website. Now, Tracy, if we could go to the Veteran Entrepreneur tab, I'd appreciate it. So if we go to entrepreneurs, let's go to just to the entrepreneur resources. I just want to show you this because you don't have to be a veteran to access this, but there's some good information that we have. If you could scroll down, that's uh, both downloadable resources or other things that you can leverage for your own information. So let's take a look here. So first, you can see the partner resources. We have close relationship with the SBA, obviously SCORE, uh, People Fund, Lift Fund, Obviously, our sister agencies. Um, also, um, since I cover the Dallas area, I'm working closely with the Vet Veteran Women's Enterprise Center there, and uh, who also works with the WBC and also the other supplier diversity councils. On the left-hand side, you'll see other downloadable resources. The first one is really about just launching, and it may not apply directly to everyone that's on the call, but there's some good information that's foundational about how to do, uh, how to start a business in Texas. Uh, there's more information on our program. The nuts and bolts is actually a traditional business plan. It's loaded with information. We use it as a reference because it is so comprehensive. So if you're looking at a refresher or you want more information about um, maybe per, uh, enhancing the uh, business plan that you do have, I would go there. And we've recently just created the veteran uh, VEP, our Better Entrepreneur Government Contracting Guide. This guide is 11 pages long and it's 
we've really tried to make it comprehensive. It covers uh, the local municipality, state, federal, and VA uh, process information on how to um, get involved or understand the process. I've included all these live links so you're not running all over the internet trying to find where this information is. We also have uh, links to the supplier diversity councils there, and uh, we have sample capability statements, and um, it's kind of like a worksheet or actually information that we did get from um, our partners at uh, UTSA on how to build a good capability statement. So there's some really good information there that um, you know if you need a refresher or you want to refresh your capability statement, take a look at it. It's all downloadable, uh, and I think it's helpful. We've also included here some of the information that we get from the governor's office. So if you haven't been to the governor's website, uh, they've provided an update on Texas licenses and permits. Uh, they have a uh, guide there. And I just think it's really important to leverage all of these resources. And obviously, you don't have to be a veteran-owned business to do it, but uh, this is here for our veterans and for, obviously, family members and anyone else who needs that information. So I think we could go to the next slide. Um, I just want to make sure that I mention some of the other initiatives that um, I don't necessarily have on the slide, but if you are interested, we have started an initiative with the Texas Alcohol um, and uh, Beverage uh, Commission. So if you're interested or you're starting a like a, a brewing or some kind of bar and this kind of thing, we do have a mentorship program so if you are a veteran and you're looking for mentorship on how to start that kind of that field, uh, we do have a mentorship grow, uh, program going on with uh, TABC and Greg Shigamasa leads that out for us. Later this fall, we'll be coming out with a uh, TBC marketing program and we'll be sending out uh, uh, like a logo uh, veteran uh, sticker to all of our veteran owned businesses. So they're identified as a veteran owned business in the state of Texas. And here on the slide in front of you, you have our contact information. If you go to the website, um, if you would like to contact, contact us, I would definitely recommend going to the website because based on where you are in the state, you will be automatically directed to the representative in your area or in your region. So um, again, if you have any questions, I'll be here for you uh, through the call. Uh, you can also reach out via email uh, or go through our website. And I look forward to answering any questions that anyone has. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Christina. That concludes our presentation, and I'm going to turn it over to Lynn to cover all the questions and answers for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ladies. Um, so we're going to open it up to the questions. If you haven't submitted your question and still have some, please go to your questions tab, and you can um, send a question in, and we will start answering those. So Tracy, if you want to read the first question for us uh, yes good morning everyone question number one my company drymore is a hub certified agency through the comptroller's office but sba said that our address location does not fall into the necessary approved area i'm confused we are also SBE and WBE certified 3BCOH. So I can, I think what you're asking is, um, th and there's a difference. There's um, the statewide hub certification, and then you have the federal hub zone certification. So yes, you may have uh, applied for your statewide hub cert certificate and certification, and have been granted that. But the Federal Hub Zone program looks at where your business is located, where your employees live. So those are two different programs. They have some similarities, but um, one doesn't guarantee that you'll get the other certification. Um, <clears throat> so it sounds like you have some other federal certifications that are relevant to, to some of the procurements. Um, but there is a difference between the state of Texas hub certificate and the hub zone certification at the federal level. So Lynn, if I can add to that, if, um, if there's still further confusion with that, they're welcome to call me over at the statewide hub program and we'll walk through their issues and figure out where they can go.
Great, thank you. Next question. The HMS DC appears to have it more together and more offering when compared to DFW MSDC. How can members of the DFW MSDC partner or take advantage of all the great opportunities not offered by DFW MSDC? Well, th thank you for that um, information. And so you can become what's called a subscriber to the Houston organization. Subscription services allows you to utilize the certification you receive with DFW and just um, give us your basic contact information and a copy of your certificate and then you'll be able to utilize the resources that we have in the organization. So that is a, um, a interesting perspective that you have because what the programming each of those regional councils do is what's relative to the demand of their MBE suppliers and their corporate members. So although it may seem that we are we we do have different programming from DFW, and the reason why we have that programming is because our MBEs have demanded that we have those types of programs. So you can um, become a subscriber to Houston. All you have to do is contact that email address, and we will send you the subscription services information. Great, thank you. Next question, who can we send information to about bids and pre-bids to share with your members? This is Constance, I'll go first. Um, you can send it to that info at hmscc.org. So that same email address that you have on the slides, you can actually send it there and we will route it to the right person. And this is Debbie with the Women's Business Council Southwest. Um, same answer, send it to info at wbcsouthwest.org and it will be posted and uh, made available to our membership. So to add to that, this is Maya Ingram. On the Hub webpage, we have a list of all our memorandums of agreement and there is a contact for each one of those if you click on their on their link off of our web page. Next question. Do the MBE and WBE have a fee to obtain certification? I can um, start uh, for, there is a fee for um, being screened for national WeBank certification, which is the first step in uh, in our reviewing any application. So yes, the short answer is there is a fee and it is uh, based on revenue size. So um, if you are under a million in revenue, it's $350 annually. Uh, you are recertified uh, with us on an annual basis. Even though your hub certification um, is a four-year certification, with us, you are reevaluated um, on an annual basis um, for WeBank certification. Um, so it ranges from $350 under a million uh, to 500 for one to five million. It's 750 if you are 5 million to 10 million, and it's $1,000 if you are over 10 million. Uh, and then the final um, tier is over 50 million is $1,250 annually. So this is Constance with HMSDC. Uh, our uh, certification fees are based on revenues as well. For class ones, which is revenue under 1 million, it's $250. Class two is revenue between one and 10 million, that's 400. Class three is revenue of 10 to 50 million, that's 650. And class four is revenue over 50 million, it's $800. Excellent. Next question. Business insurance is very expensive 
especially on IT and telecom area. Any suggestions? Tracy, can you repeat the question? Yes. Business insurance is very expensive, especially on IT and telecom area. Any suggestions? Um, sure, this is Constance. Um, we do have a list of MBEs that we strongly encourage um, utilization of other MBEs in procuring products or services that you may need, insurance being one. And so you can always look at the um, database and provide those relationship building events and talk to insurance carriers that may be able to assist you in that. So I know that we have several insurance firms that we have referred to other minority businesses to help them with those types of business insurance. And so if you're interested in obtaining that list, you can actually email that info at hmsdc.org email and we'll send you a list of those insurance firms. While this doesn't directly answer your question, I, uh, I will just add that um, we, uh, we do have, uh, as Constance said, access to um, WBEs in various industries who may be able to help you. So it, we do have WBEs in the insurance industry. Um, but there is a tremendous opportunity within our organization to do business with one another. Um, I, I uh, know that while some businesses are um, challenged or, or not at the scale yet to do business with a Fortune 500 major corporation, but somewhere else in the supply chain uh, is a better fit for them. And many times that's other WBE members. Um, I do know that many of our major corporations and public entities have capacity building programs within their supplier diversity initiatives. And so it might be worth an ask to uh, your prime customers uh, about what their capacity building programs are and how you might take advantage of those. Uh, Maya, could I just chime in? This is Christina. Um, I would definitely leverage the organizations that are on the call first, right? Because um, it, it's better to be, uh, you know, connected to these organizations here locally. But in the absence of that, you could also reach out to the National Federation of Independent Businesses and see if they have some kind of an insurance program that uh, might be more cost effective um, for folks on the call. Excellent, we're um, bottling down on the last few questions. On the Texas Veteran Commission's procurement, is there an opportunity for transportation bids? Uh, not for us, not for the Texas Veterans Commission, but you, I would recommend you try either Texas Facilities Commission and go to their website because they have lots of transportation requirements, I think. And um, uh, I'm kind of at a loss right now, but I could probably think of some others, but I would start there first. And it's, I believe it's on the front page of their, um, their webpage. So I would check that out first. So to add to that, if you go to the Electronic State Business Daily and do a search based on the NIGP Commodity Code, you will find all the different agencies that have any kinds of bid opportunities for transportation. And I'll just add, if you are interested in transportation um, outside of government, there's lots and lots of opportunities um, in the private sector. Great, thank you. Texas Department of Transportation may also offer some opportunities. Uh, next question. We at Texas, oh, pardon me. We are Texas Hub certified with DFW MSDC. Where do I download our latest Texas Hub certificate from? 
You should get one when approved for your certification. Uh, if you need another one, you need to contact the statewide hub office. The um, information, I believe, is at the end of this presentation. Uh, but if you call us and let us know that you need a reprint of your certification, we can provide you with that. Okay, uh, we've got two more questions. Will I use my money to supply goods or services to the state agency or do they provide any promissory note? I, I don't believe there's promissory notes guaranteed through the state agencies. Um, it depends on how the procurements are written. Um, it, I'd, ha I'd have to look into that a little further to get you more information. And last question. Or I'm sorry, there's two more. One just came in. Can someone outside the state of Texas bid on opportunities in Texas? This is Maya and yes, absolutely. Um, anyone is able to bid on any state procurement opportunity. Uh, they can all be found. Any posting over $25,000 can be found on the Electronic State Business Daily or on the different individual agencies and universities forecast procurement pages. But yes, it is open to anyone. It is not hubs. It is just any business interested in doing business with the state of Texas can competitively bid. And finally, I have already submitted applications for hub and WBE, et cetera. I own a deli and looking to get more catering opportunities with state. What's the best way or connection I should do? Well, it's uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, you've already uh, submitted your application. Perhaps you are still in the review process. Um, if you have submitted uh, your application to the Women's Business Council Southwest, then you're doing exactly what you need to do. Um, you will receive um, notification from us when, you, um, when the decision is made regarding your certification. And once you're certified with us, you're a full member of our council. So you'll have access to everything that I talked about earlier. You can contact us directly. We'd sit, we can sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with um, how to make the most of your certification and kind of prioritize um, your uh, primary customers that you want to target uh, and the best ways of developing those relationships. Uh, we're happy to help you with that getting started kind of information. Additionally, we provide on a monthly basis um, a webinar called I'm Certified Now What? Um, and it will um, it's about it's a very quick 20 to 30 minute webinar that really helps you understand what the very next steps are uh, and how to start making those connections. So to add to that, this is Maya Ingram. Uh, the statewide hub pro statewide hub program has different kinds of educational and training events, networking opportunities um, throughout the state and throughout the year. Uh, those are all posted on the hub calendar on the statewide hub page. Um, anyone on the hub staff, including myself, can easily provide you a one on one um, review of the different resources available and just kind of go over what might be best and you know put together a strategy for you. I will be happy to do that. If you want to call the 800 number on statewide hub, uh, either any of the hub staff or myself can assist you in putting a strategy together. Great, thank you. Um, we will um, move on to the next slide. All right, so in wrapping up, um, we have two more planned hub talk series. You can see both of these are going to be regarding construction opportunities. Um, so we will have different agencies and universities participating in these panels. So we will have a set group on June 10th, and then we'll have a different group on June 24th. So if you're interested in any of those, 
uh, series, please feel free to register now. The link is up and posted. Um, so go ahead and, and get your spot. Um, and we'll be holding those in the next uh, month. And then on the next slide, we've also posted um, the previous Hub Talk series that we've had. And you can see the recordings and presentations, uh, slide decks, and we've also posted the questions and answers. And those are also posted on our DIR Hub website. Um, so you can access those at any time, any of the previous series that we've had. And then we will also convert this uh, series and post the presentation, the audio, and questions and answers as well. Next slide. So for your information, we've included Maya Ingram's contact information. You can see Constance Jones, Debbie Hurst, and Christina Mortel's uh, contact information. You've got phone numbers, you have emails, you have websites, um, all resources. My information is there as well. But um, keep in mind, uh, I like to tell vendors when I'm talking to them, there may not be direct opportunities with the state. You may find that through another company through another organization and an indirect path to the state. Um, so I like to call us the three-legged stool. We all need each other. And prior to the COVID-19 pandemic um, happening, I was in Houston attending an event in February. And I spoke with the vendor and he stated that he'd done a ton of federal work and he was, there were people that had tried to talk to him about diversifying who his customers were. And he was like, no, nah, I'm good. The federal programs, those are good. A lot of those you can graduate out of. Um, so when life changes and opportunities change, um, you need those other resources. You need to diversify who you're doing business with. So I know we have a lot of new companies that are unfamiliar with doing business with the state. Um, use your hub coordinators at the agencies and universities, they are your resources. And then always reach out to the entities that the state has MOAs uh, in place with. They are also resources for you. And you may find opportunities um, with other companies or other entities through these additional resources. So that's why we try to post the information and provide the contact information. It's there for your use. So please, um, don't miss those opportunities to connect with these entities and individuals. Next slide. And that's all we've got for you today. We really appreciate you all tuning in and participating in this series. Don't forget to register for the next series. We'll be covering construction and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you everyone.